So welcome back students to one more session of your metallurgy chapter. I think with this topic we will be completing the whole of metallurgy chapter. Uh, in this particular uh, topic I will be teaching about the thermodynamical aspects as well as electrochemical aspects of your metallurgy. Right. So you would have seen this diagram in your uh, textbook, the Eligam diagram, isn't it? Right. So well, let us see what are the frequently asked questions in, under this Eligam diagram. And let us start with the first question, what actually or explain in brief Eligam diagram. Now, this Elegam diagram was first introduced by H.J.T. Elegam. So, the person who has introduced this is H.J.T. Elegam, right? So, this is not uh, required for us. Like, this is only for your info. So, N is silent in this Elegam. Basically, Elegam diagram explains us two important concepts. That is what you have to stress in your answer. The first most important thing is, it's going to tell us, okay, let us first put it in bullets. This diagram will explain me to or it will help me to take or cho choose the correct reducing agent. Basically, why are we doing or why are we learning this metallurgy? We are trying to convert the metal uh, from the ore. The, we are converting that ore into a metal oxide and after that metal oxide we are trying to use uh, different uh, reducing agents to reduce it to the required the metal which we are uh, supposed to extract so that choice of that reducing agent which reducing agent should you use at what time which will reduce whether the higher ones will reduce the lower ones or not the lower ones will reduce the higher ones or not that is what is important so elegram diagram basically explains us or it gives us to know the choice of reducing agent so the first important keyword is choice of reducing agent right so next important thing it will also tell us whether the reaction is feasible or not will the reaction proceed in the forward direction or will the product formation is not feasible will it stop at a particular point so that feasibility that flexibility is explained by the uh, elegam diagram so it uh, it explains the feasibility of reduction of metal oxide to form product or if you want to make it as simpler than this right it explains the feasibility of a reaction this also you can write or you can write feasibility of a reaction this is also okay fine so basically your elegant diagram we are this diagram is represented in the form of a graph very important what is it going to take it's going to take two important factors first is delta g naught on the y-axis and uh, delta t on the x-axis okay what is this uh, delta g basically right so i have to write that also isn't it so it is definition so this is um, it helps us now definition is it is a graphical representation it is a graphical representation of so what do we take we have taken delta g we will see what is delta g delta g on y axis and temperature that is t on x axis Simple. Done. So now we have already studied in grade 11 Gibbs free energy. Have you studied? That is why we have called thermodynamical factor of this particular uh, metallurgy. So in like, grade 11 when we studied, we studied delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. This is what is you have studied in Gibbs free energy. Yes, the amount of free energy which explains the, uh, if the Gibbs free energy is negative, the reaction is compulsory. If you get negative answers, the reaction is compulsory feasible. It will go in the forward direction give you products so here what is delta G delta G is Gibbs free energy delta H is entropy T is your temperature change in entropy change in Gibbs free energy temperature this is not change it is temperature and delta S is change in entropy Right, this is your fact. Now, what did uh, Gibbs do? He has picked up this concept of Gibbs free energy at equilibrium state. Right, so at equilibrium, he spoke everything in terms of equilibrium that became a biggest limitation for uh, ligand diagram. Right, so they've asked me to explain in brief. So I'm trying to explain, put it in brief terms. I'm when I go into the detailed explanation, I'll clearly give you what what is what. So just right, he explains. He explains Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free 
energy. So Gibbs free energy at equilibrium means what? What is at equilibrium? We are going to represent it as delta G naught. Delta G naught is Gibbs free energy at equilibrium, right? So which is equal to RT ln K. K is what? Equilibrium constant. Yes, this is what is your Gibbs free energy at equilibrium and this is your Gibbs free energy when that particular temperature is uh, you have noted. So this is the basic thing of Elegam diagram. I will meet you again with one more important concept how to explain Gibbs free energy. Now, I have given you an idea of uh, Elegam diagram. Let us go into a little bit detail of Elegam diagram. So, now basically you have a series of metal oxides here. Just observe metal uh, getting oxidized, forming metal oxide. Everywhere you find metal oxides, isn't it? So, now we are going to choose whether if I have to reduce this metal oxide to metal, which reducing agent should I use? Right? So, should I use a higher one above than this? Or for this, should I use now for aluminium uh, oxide or okay, aluminium trioxide? I have to reduce aluminium trioxide into aluminium metal. So I have to choose whether should I use magnesium or magnesium metal for that because for reduction of metal oxide, I have to use a metal, isn't it? Yes. So because this metal ox this magnesium comes out with oxygen is Mg1, aluminium is out. So I have to choose, I have to know the information whether should I pick up magnesium for reduction of aluminium or should I pick up zinc? for aluminium it that is what is your elegant diagram now elegant diagram I say and also let us write the limitations in this now we'll be doing some FAQs also on elegant so that's easy for you to answer now I said basically elegant diagram speaks in terms of a thermodynamic aspects of elegant diagram it speaks in terms of delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S now what is the concept you have to remember three important things here what <coughs> now first condition one if I start increasing the temperature, now temperature is here, when I start increasing the temperature 400, 800, 1200, I am going to increase the temperature. So first condition is when you increase the temperature, what will happen to, to this whole multipl multiplication term? Automatically the entropy also increases, isn't it? So when the temperature increases, T delta S also increases. Then when this is increasing, what will happen to Gibbs free energy? Delta G then becomes negative. Yes or no? So here what is happening when it is increasing delta ds this becomes positive and delta g becomes negative. When the negative uh, delta g value is negative that means the reaction is feasible 100% the reaction is feasible and you can use that reducing agent for reaction. Okay till now you didn't understand when I do the examples you will be able to understand. Let us see condition 2. In condition 2 what am I going to take? Now this is your concept. Now I am if I say increase in temperature, T delta S is decreased, increased. Now suppose if I decrease delta S, if the uh, temperature, okay, let us write, temperature, decrease in temperature, so T delta S becomes negative, less. So automatically delta G becomes positive. When delta G becomes positive, the reaction is not feasible. The value, if you get a negative positive value, that because uh, the lower the energy the reaction system, uh, lower the energy of the system, the feasibility of the reaction is more. That is what you have studied in grade 11 thermodynamics. It is the same way. If I get delta G answer as positive, that means the reaction is not feasible. These two things you have to remember. Now, I also said <coughs> we are going to study the uh, limitations. Before going into that, let us remember one, one more thing. The metals which are at the lower end of the graph, now I am seeing magnesium oxide below, aluminium also trioxide below, right? The metal oxides which are at the lower end cannot be reduced by metals which are above in the series, which are above in the series, they cannot reduce these metals. We will see why is that, well, let us write that, metal oxides at lower end of the graph cannot be reduced. I am just giving you uh, conditions so that it is easy for us to apply in the uh, FAQs. Cannot be reduced by metals above in the graph. 
above in the graph okay this is what is that now what are the limitations of this the elegant diagram basically it speaks only about two, one, two things one is how to choose a reducing agent and how can or with, uh, whether the reaction is feasible or not but what is happening is it explaining any, anything about the rate of the reaction kinetics of the reaction no isn't it i'm not speaking any terms rate of change of reactant product no so first limitation of elegam is it did not explain anything about the rate of the reaction first most important so we can write that <clears throat> rate of the reaction could not be explained okay then what else every time i said gibbs free energy speaks only at equilibrium the concept of elegam diagram speaks gibbs free energy at equilibrium every time it is very difficult to particularly come and speak about the equilibrium state isn't it so you, you can't apply it for all the reactions yes so that particular equilibrium state if you if i have to see the different varieties of reactions that attaining equilibrium calculating the equilibrium at that particular point seeing the rate of the reaction uh, seeing the reducing agent of for that particular reaction not feasible not uh, not clearly explained so it speaks only at at what it speaks means it it is applied it is applied only at equilibrium conditions okay let us use all these whatever i told now for different effect use of elegam diagram